Hello everyone, this segment is going to be on my 10th grade year of my two trimesters of Woodhall. This takes place when I was 16, right after Sage Walk. I got transferred to the Woodhall School in Bethlehem, Connecticut. It's a very small school with uh, two dorms and um, yeah. Uh, I didn't want to go there, so I went to a wilderness program instead, which was kind of a mistake. Um, the jail cell sized rooms and the small area plus living in the snow. And I didn't want to be in the north. And there, there were lots of reasons I didn't want to go to Woodhall. So I ended up going to uh, Sagewalk instead first. And then Sagewalk made Woodhall seem appealing. Even though they had jail cell sized rooms and there was only a small public area to hang out in when you were outside of your room other than the study. So I guess during the snow there were two places to hang out the study was even open. It was very cramped. Um, yeah, so uh, I entered at the, be the end of the first trimester, which didn't really count, and uh, I really started at the beginning of the second trimester. Northern boarding schools sometimes have trimesters instead of semesters. Um, and I went to school there for six days a week. Saturday was a half day of school, which was incredibly boring. But it's not like there was anything to do other than maybe play on your computer or hang out in the snow um, when you weren't doing schoolwork. Um, we did have a gym which was used for uh, athletic activities, which was fun. Um, there was a band room I never went into where the, the band practiced. And uh, there was a senior lounge, but I wasn't a senior, so I, I never went in there. I was a 10th grader. Um, yeah, I had to share my little jail cell size room with a uh, autistic roommate, which is similar to what I have, which is Asperger's. Um, if I played music he didn't like, he would bang his head against the wall to let me know to uh, turn the music off instead of telling me, please turn the music off, he'd bang his head on the wall. Um, Let's see, he used to let the smokers in at night, but it was waking me up, so uh, I, I told them I'd report them if they kept using my window to get out of the snow every night, because um, everyone would sneak out and smoke cigarettes except me, and my roommate didn't either, he was just the dude that let them in and out. Um, let's see, and when I entered, everyone thought I was going to be a mean bully or something, because I was entering in the middle of the year. Um, the dude they kicked out, um, was kicked out because he took a prank too seriously. They were doing a prank where, um, everyone showed up in their boxers for the beginning of classes and uh, one dude showed up with a sock on his private parts instead of boxers and they kicked him out because he was basically nude other than a sock uh, over his phallus is what I heard. Um, I wasn't there so I can't really confirm that I saw that but I can say that that's a, that's a rumor I heard and I guess I took that guy's spot at Woodhall. 
So that's why the position was opened, because someone showed up for a class with a sock over his phallus uh, without any underwear on. Um, that's what I was told anyway. Um, <laughs> I missed out on that prank. I heard of another prank where they um, tie-dyed um, Mrs. Woodhall's uh, toy poodle. Uh, yeah. <laughs> she chose a, a show poodle with messed up teeth because no one wanted a poodle with messed up teeth, which is basically what she did with us. She chose a bunch of teenagers that no one wanted. Uh, we were all teenagers that no one wanted. Absolutely no one loved me, and Woodhall took me in. Um, Mrs. Woodhall was the uh, old woman who ran the Woodhall School. Um, yeah, she was like 90 or something, 80, I don't know. And she used to be a nun, but she quit being a nun and got married. And I think her husband was a priest, and he quit being a priest to get married, and then they divorced, and he became a priest again, and she started the school or something. Now her son runs the school, and um, her daughter, we called Miss Abby, was a teacher there. Um, yeah, and she was like the only person that cared about me there, really. And so... Nobody cared about me except Miss Abby, and she was dying of some sort of brain cancer. So it was very tragic when we lost uh, Miss Abby. Because my parents didn't care about me at the time. I was totally abandoned. Um, uh, I don't think any of the other teachers cared about me. Some of them might have pretended to. I don't know. But when uh, Miss Abby died, I, I saw no reason to stay at Woodhall because no one cared about me anymore. Um, I remember her uh, writing me a note that I was given. I forgot what it said that I was going to read after she died. Um, yeah, and at Woodhull, um, we had a lot of committee for accountabilities, and we had very small classes. Um, so my last real education year was 10th grade. Um, there was a guy named Sean Wesley who wrote a bestseller called Oh, the Glory of It All, which I recommend reading. Um, and he spent two years at Woodhall and it made a bestseller. Um, yeah, so it was a very interesting place. I don't want to slander it too badly, so I guess I'm going to censor what I say about it. But uh, I remember um, all of these committees for accountability. <laughs> There are all sorts of people uh, breaking the rules. Um, they wouldn't let us into the forest because they were scared that we would uh, be smoking stuff in the forest. And um, Yeah, I didn't participate in that. And they wanted me to monitor the phones. We weren't allowed to use cell phones, so... They only had two uh, phones, and they were wall phones, and they put me in my room across from one of the wall phones. And there was a guy that ordered a bunch of alcohol from a driver on one of these phones. And um, instead of reporting him, we got him to turn himself in, 
and for some reason he was forgiven. Um, and they brought his driver to committee for accountability and for whatever reason they didn't give the driver a felony and they didn't kick out the student who bought the alcohol. I don't know why, but everything became as it was after he turned himself in. Um, as far as the school being dangerous, uh, I was kind of an alpha there. Um, I wrestled with a lot of people there. Um, yeah, I generally won. Um, there was a guy who cracked on one of the teachers. Um, there was a responsible student leader there who uh, we all looked up to. And one day he just attacked our um, um, Greek uh, culture teacher. I used to take a course in Greek culture instead of Spanish too, because I was bad at Spanish, so they let me take a culture on ancient Greeks instead for some reason. And um, this was a very harmless teacher who did nothing to offend anyone. And um, our student council leader attacked him, threatening him. I, I don't want to exaggerate it too much, but um, there were three guys trying to hold him down, and I got in between the teacher and him, and, um, you know, this guy had some sort of psychotic break or something. He snapped out of it, and... Um, laid down and hyperventilated and stuff and um, I went to go tell more teachers about it and then I went to my little room and withdrew from it because I was getting PTSD and um, they sent that dude to a wilderness program and he went back to Woodhall afterwards he had some issues to work out I guess but up until then, we all looked up to him, and he was a responsible member of the community and the head of student council and stuff. I forgot his name. Wouldn't say it anyway. Um, let's see. Uh, yeah. Things got um, pretty rough for me after uh, that stuff um, yeah and I saw no reason to come back I guess I'm gonna I don't want to say too much to slander the school um, what, what can I say positive about the school um, the little classes helped. Um, I discovered acrylic painting when I was there. I didn't know that um, I was a painter until I went to Woodhall. Um, the small class sizes helped me learn. It was similar to being homeschooled. Um, occasionally we had some fun activities. We got to go skiing, and I remember my dad got me this purple and pink jumpsuit for skiing, and I thought this was the, you know, sending people the wrong message. It was a very queer-looking jumpsuit. Um, it was definitely sending people the wrong message, so I couldn't decide whether to freeze my butt off or to wear this infeminine looking jumpsuit. It was highly embarrassing and I couldn't get my dad to send me a more masculine, uh, uh, you know, suit for skiing. Um, that pissed the heck out of me. Um, let's see. No, more stuff going on my head I should censor. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. 
I remember um, lots of stuff. <laughs> okay. I guess I should probably cut it short for now. So I don't want to get in too much trouble talking about Woodhull. Um, 